My first impressions of Bird Key were, wow, this place is awesome. It's just beautiful. It's, it's just simply beautiful. <laughs> so many species of bird in one place, that was just really fantastic. I've seen the variety of habitats that are out here, the abundance of birds that Bird Key supports. Uh, it's really an amazing resource, I think, that Jamaica has. I don't know how many folks are aware that it's here, but uh, this would be an awesome seabird colony no matter where you put it. I've never seen a brown booby before. I've never seen a mass booby before I came out here. Never seen so much birds roosting in close proximity. Most of the mainland birds are even water birds. You don't see that. Those share numbers. Right now, it's a special conservation area of fish sanctuary, so it's only the sea around the island that's protected. The key itself should be protected. Because birds are already protected under the Wildlife Protection Act, but the area itself should be more controlled. The other thing that you might want to think about too, especially if you're coming out and you're working with volunteers, is give them a task to do first that they complete successfully. So if you come out to an island like this and you've got some volunteers, don't ask them to count city turns first. And oftentimes you find that it takes you a few efforts to figure out exactly how you want to record things and record them efficiently. And that's okay. We have a group of us out here. We just uh, we're split up into groups and we're all counting different types of seabirds. So I'm doing brown noddies and mast boobies. As far as mast boobies are concerned, we saw a lot more in March, I would say, but as far as the other species are concerned, you know, the sooty terns, royal terns, bridal terns, brown noddies, we didn't see any at all in March. And now we're seeing literally thousands of sooty terns, and, and really we're, seeing, we're just seeing a lot of birds. So I guess it's, it's, it's just an indication of, you know, peak nesting season. It's apparent that bird key may be one of the more important seabird breeding sites in the region, uh, both for the number of species that it supports and then the number of individuals that it supports as well. It's interesting that given the diversity of seabirds in the Caribbean and the abundance of seabirds in the Caribbean, how underrepresented they have been in the field of seabird science over the past several decades. So the Caribbean is really in need of both seabird science and, and correspondingly seabird conservation. So we're hoping that this capacity building workshops that we've been undertaking can help to build that opportunity and to move seabird science and conservation forward throughout the region, not just here in Jamaica, but from the Bahamas through, through all the West Indies, even into the northern end of South America. About 100 birds were banded here before, about three or four years ago. And we set the team out now to see how many birds that they can find with bands on and to get the band numbers um, and bring that back um, just so we'll have an idea of the return rate of the ones that were banded. And once we've done that, we're going to go out and band everybody who doesn't have a band already so that we can see what's happening with them. And the young ones from each year, each year will have a different colour mark as well as an aluminium band. So we'll be able to just look and see um, quite quickly like the age of the birds that are on, that are on the key. We'll know the age at first breeding because when the first time we see one of those colour mark birds, with this year we put a black band on. So when we see a black banded bird, we'll know that that's that it's back and it's breeding in the colony. Next year we'll use another colour so that we'll be able to um, identify each age cohort separately. We're trying to find a, a young chick.
so we can take the adult because that's the best specimen the one with the young chicks because they'll definitely go for food um, they definitely come back to the chicks and the chicks don't really move around much if any at all so that's the best one we're trying to find We got a male and yeah. yes. hair? Yeah. Okay. Yep. This one's light. Yeah, I'm sure. It's it got one thousand We're measuring the beak of the exposed culmin that's from the hairline to the tip of the snout. And then we're also measuring what we call the tarsus, which is from the from the sort of the elbow to the wrist. The different populations around the Caribbean are different sizes, so we, d we just don't know the basic measurements, like how big are they, how, how much do they weigh, so we're just getting those basic information on size, so we know how distinct they are from other Caribbean populations. There's one, six, two, seven, dash, zero, zero, six. The feathers are pretty yes, distinct, right. so can you do the counting on this one so I can see? Yes, it's much new, it's probably not fully grown. It's not as long as that one. This is a big bird. So after it was tagged and the GPS was, was attached, took it back and I released it close to its um, chick, where another member of the team was actually standing guard by the chick to make sure that no predators harassed the chick while the, the parent was away. No, I've never done this before. That's it's my first opportunity to actually handle seabirds. So two days ago, we captured six mass boobies here on the colony, all of them with chicks. And we deployed small GPS devices that should track their movements over that two-day period. Today, we recaptured the first of those. So you can see the device taped to the base of the bird's tail. So it's simply applied with some high-grade uh, marine tape and it's double wrapped in some condoms to keep it waterproof. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the device and then I'll download the data and see what we find out. First thing I did was I looked to see how many points the GPS actually recorded. I'm pretty pleased so far, uh, 780 points out of a possible 920. It stayed on, it stayed dry. Uh, all the things that I was concerned about seemed to work out okay. The bird is in good shape, that's probably the most important thing. Everyone's always thought that mass boobies might be relatively local during the breeding season and might forage, you know, within 100 kilometers or so of their colonies uh, for the most part. And that's what people in the Indian Ocean and the South Pacific have seen as well. Uh, so it looks, at, for this bird, that it may have stayed within about 20 or 30 kilometers of the colony. One hope would be to, to do more research here at Middle and Bird Key that can really help serve Jamaica and serve the communities here as well as uh, benefit the birds. And I think there are uh, three or four are very outstanding research questions that could be addressed uh, with a little bit of funding and a little bit of effort. So, so I, I kind of hope I can be back here and working on some of those questions over the next few years and, and even better if I can do it with some graduate students uh, who are local or from here in Jamaica so they can work on their own seabird colony. I think as one of my roles within the university is to inspire future scientists and, and we, we, well I spend a lot of time talking to and working with a lot of undergraduate students especially in the marine program. This experience has actually broadened my vision or my, my scope in terms of what is out there and oftentimes we, we, we motivate the students into areas that they could further go on to study and now having this experience there it just opened the avenue for, for studying birds and I mean just just the, the possibilities that have come to mind about the, the bird colonies that are around Port Royal, around the, the Kingston Harbour region. It's, it's not necessarily for me to study, but to motivate a, a young and upcoming scientist to go and study that and even provide some basic help to them. You know, it's, it's, I, I, I thought that was one of the main things I could come away from this workshop with. I would really love to come back to the Pedro Keys to participate in a bird survey, the continent assess habitat assessment, as well as checking those birds that we've abandoned to see if they have returned, any activity to do with the birds, and whatever assistance the Nature Conservancy needs in doing bird surveys out here, I'll be more than happy to assist. Another hope I have is that uh, whether it's TNC or uh, one of the Jamaican agencies, I'd really like to see them consider a long-term monitoring program for bird key. I think that would benefit the resource, and by that I mean the seabirds themselves. 
I think it would benefit our understanding of the, uh, of the marine environment here uh, south of Jamaica. And I also think it would, it would be a real benefit for whoever set up a long-term monitoring program to continue to train and build capacity in people to do seabird monitoring and conservation you know, for the next few decades, because that's really the scale at which we need to think about. If these birds are long-lived and can breed for 30 years, we need to be thinking about monitoring programs that last that long just to get through one cohort, one group of birds that are born in 2012. We need to be out here in 2042 uh, monitoring to see if those birds are still here. That won't be me, but hopefully it will be uh, somebody. So I think that's another hope that I have, uh, at least here for the region.